Thing. So welcome back to Introduction to Business on this lovely Monday, October 11th. Hope everyone had a good a good weekend. Yes, Catherine, I'm curious on how uh, Comic-Con was, but you don't have to get into it right now. But if you want to type a couple words in the chat, please feel free not to put you on the spot or anything. But Uh, hopefully it went well. Hopefully, hopefully everyone's weekend went well. You had a good weekend. My weekend was pretty good. Uh, I went on a nice little road trip. Got to see friends I haven't seen for a while. Did some sourcing uh, for products uh, for our online businesses. So that was really cool. And was out of state a couple a couple of times. So uh, lots of fun, something different, and uh, also a good amount of work as well so um you know i'm going to adjust my screen here hopefully it doesn't this doesn't mess you guys up hopefully that's okay all right good afternoon all right a couple oh i don't like this song hey trevor good afternoon thank you all for being here nice we got a good little group today thank you Oh, yes, Catherine, very interesting. Oh, that's awesome. Really cool, good. Thank you, well, thank you for sharing, that's really cool. All right, so we, before we get into our agenda, uh, let's start with a couple quotes of the week. A small business is an amazing way to serve and leave an impact on the world you live in, said by Nicole Snow. I want to give her credit, even though I'm not sure who that is. But I should probably know. I definitely know Estee Lauder. I never dreamed about success. I worked for it. I like that. No, I think visions and I think dream. I think to dream is important. It's important to dream. You know, I, I love having dreams. I think it's a great thing. But I understand the concept there. Uh, it's not only important to to dream it, but also work for it right? Estee Lauder. So uh, good stuff there. I'll leave that up for a second. So today's agenda, um, we are going to get into the chapter for review. But we're we're going to jump into reviewing the business plan project first. So we touched on that last week. We'll get into a little bit more depth in depth today. And as I'm going through it, I'll I'll, I'll try to pause for questions. But if you have questions along the way, please put them up in chat or feel free to come on uh, onto the mic uh, onto the video chat if you want. Either way, just voice or video and ask your questions there too, please uh, feel free. So we're gonna do the business plan project review first, then we'll get into an abbreviated chapter four review and we'll try to get us out of here, not only on time, but how about early today, all right? Um, from what this um, somewhat of a holiday Monday, I guess, a uh, few schools and people have off except us, so I appreciate you being here. Um, but a big reminder, is our first uh, meeting of the semester for the business club takes place today at 4 30. so if you'd like to join the business club if you'd like to come out and find out what's going on with the business club or for some reason you'd like to see me again twice in one day i don't know why but I, i'm kidding um you'll get an email invite as a guest to the business club meeting on canvas if you're not signed up for the business club you can email your professor, me, at the email I'm putting down in the chat, or you can email the business official business club email address. Business club room, I think so. There you go. So shoot an email to either myself or the business club We'll get you on the list and it's basically we'll update you every week with a newsletter 
And we'll also make sure you're invited to all the events, the meetings, the activities um, as well. So all you have to do is sign up. No obligation, no cost to you. So, but our first meeting is today at 4.30. Um, so let's jump into, into the business plan. So I think we touched on this last week. And I'm going to show you a copy of it again now. There we go. So your business plan assignment is due December 5th. It's due December 5th. And something we talked about last week is that this doesn't necessarily have to be a new business. It could be a business that you're working on already. It could be a business that you're part of, but it's important that it originally came from you in whatever capacity that means. So um, if you're already running a business and you started the business yourself and you'd like to use it for this assignment, you can. Please feel, feel free. It could be a business that you're thinking about doing and you'd like to take the steps to detail this hybrid business plan and get some feedback from your professor and your professor thoughts on it. This is a great time to do that. Or maybe you have no plans for a business or you don't even know which business to start. Well, this can be a new business, but you want to make sure it's based in reality. So I'll give you a quick example. Let's say I wanted to do a seasonal pumpkin painting business. So we're going to call it uh, P cubed. Palucci's, that's me, Professor Palucci. Um, maybe it's Professor Palucci's pumpkin painting business. It's a lot of P's, right? Um, what's P to the fourth? All right, anyway, Palucci's pumpkin painting business. So kind of a new seasonal um, business that I want to start. Well, already I have the company name, but then I would follow in this outline to flesh out the rest of the plans for the project. All right, is there any questions about there about the starting point? Now, you can, you can ask me questions here in chat, but if you get questions when we're done with the class or any, any other time, you can always email me uh, as, as well. So if you think of your questions, let me start, let me start this. If you didn't know where to get this business plan information. And I see a few extra people have joined our group. Thank you for being here. If you didn't, you don't know, say, hey, professor, I see this business plan overview on the screen. Where do I get that? Well, it's actually at the end of our outline for our course. So at the beginning of the semester, I emailed out this outline to the course. But if you miss this email or you miss the directions for it, if you scroll to the bottom of the outline, the business plan overview is there, nice and handy. If you miss this, you can get this on our Canvas shell. You can get this here. I'm about to show you this. Do, do, do. If you go to modules, on our Canvas shell. And you scroll down right from right in module 1A. You'll see a description there called outline, enter to business outline. You'll click on that link. Eventually it'll pop up our outline. You scroll to the bottom of that. And there you go, due December 5th is our business plan project. And then there's the there's exactly what we're going through right now, each part of this. So I'm gonna go into each part a little bit more detail, but that's where you find it. You can download it as well if you just click on this link and the little pointy hand there. Click on the link, you can download, download it as a Word document. All right, let me get back to the 
the rubric or the template right now. Are there any questions about this, about finding it, or just about the company itself or the or your business ideas? Any any questions about it? Thank you, Dominic. Anyone have any, any other questions? Just give it a pause here. You're not you're not forced. Something my dad used to say. <laughs> I don't know when my dad would say that, but um, I need to ask for something or about something, or if you wanted to eat something, you'd always say, "You're not forced." It's like, okay, Dad. Um, all right. You'll crack up that I I brought him up here in my in my lecture. All right. So let's let's break this down a little bit. Let's go through some of these. Um, and the reason why I bring this up early in the semester and you have two months to do this is because there's parts of this that you're gonna we're gonna talk about in our lectures, in the chapters, in the textbook. And that that's comes the point when you know you should be either working on this part of your plan or just realizing, hey, this is where I go to get the information or this is how to figure that part out. But let's go into a little bit more detail now about each part. So the company name, you already might already have a name or you're gonna make up the name. Now the optional part of that number one for your full five points is a company logo. And really a company logo speaks to create creativity innovation, professionalism. So you'll get parts of those points if you just put a company name. But if you include more in that section, which really a logo, how much more can you include? You'll get the full five points, all right? If you look into, and please, yeah, throw your questions up in the chat. I'll, I'll find them uh, eventually if I don't get to them right away. If you look into the mission statement, mission statements, you know, you can find information about it in chapter five, but if you go online and type in Starbucks mission statement, you type in Amazon mission statement, whatever it may be, you can find companies existing mission statements already and then use them as a template for your own mission statement. There's nothing wrong with that. you know. Um, to get an idea of what a mission statement is. Why do we form mission statements? And what, what do a mission statements want to achieve? So you just gotta, you can either read about it in our text, you can look it up online, and then use that to form your own mission statement for your, for your company. Um, Ashlyn, it, um, it's up to you. Yeah, and you know, my creative, um, I think I'm a creative person, but my graphic design skills are very limited. So luckily I have someone that does the graphic design work for me, but let's say I was in class and I couldn't do the graphic design. Um, I might just sketch it, it's, it's fine. You can you can sketch it out, to, you know, do your best, I, I understand. Yeah, don't, you don't have to fully design it. Um, if you'd like to, that's gonna speak to, I don't jump ahead a little bit here, but. That's gonna to speak to this. Let's go with a different color, right? Nice. That's gonna to speak to the creativity portion, the uh, the grammar, the professionalism, um, and other elements of it. So if you do it, if you design it and come up with something that's, um, you know, fully, um, say fully operational, it's not, doesn't make sense. You come up with something that, uh, is fully produced, then that's that's fine. Sure, that's that's great. But you don't have to. Um, all right, I'm gonna. 
So before I jump into the overview of your your business, are we going to present it to the class? No, uh, Catherine, no, there's no presentation for this portion. Um, I mean, for this project. I kind of wish there was. I've tried it before online and there's just, there's just too many issues. And it's, unfortunately it's, um, we, we in, in, when we had the in-class, just a full disclosure, yes, there was a, always a presentation portion, um, but online I've tried it and I, I, I don't want to take anything away from other people or, or disadvantages or, or whatnot because of internet and communication and computers and those kind of things. So no, it's, um, there's no presentation portion, but thank you for asking. Yeah. Um, so we, um, and I'm going to, and I'll, we'll, we'll get into that other part in a second, but an overview of your business. Now, again, this is a 10 point section. There's only a few 10 point sections that you should spend more time on. One of them is, is this overview of your business, which is your business summary. It should be detailed and it should be multiple paragraphs. So, you know, you wanna think about, let's say, I'm, let's use my pumpkin painting business as an example, all right? Do I know of any other pumpkin painting businesses in the area? No, but are there other people, other businesses, other competitors in this marketplace that have a chance or will, um, I don't wanna say take, but um, that my potential customers could go buy from them instead, could go use their services instead? Sure, there will be. So, that's what I, I want to kind of um, detail here is, A, it's a new business. So what does that new business look like? Who's my potential customers? What other businesses are in this marketplace, in this area, in this space that could potentially take my customers away? And what sets this business business apart from other businesses? How is it unique? How is it going to draw people in so they don't go maybe to the movies at night? They don't go, um, you know, to an art and wine class. You know, instead they come to this pumpkin painting session. I'm just making it up. But if, if any students want to partner with me on this possible business venture, it could be something we could do. Yes, and if you want to use pumpkin painting as your business, um, please feel free. But and I won't take anything off that I came up with it. Um, but I, I'm joking around. But still, this this portion, this section is is ten points. So you want to, you definitely want to build this out, um, and you want you want to detail this. Now remember, your what you submit, what you hand in. It could be a Word document that's broken up into sections. It could be a PowerPoint that your headings are your main uh, PowerPoint slide, but in the notes section is where you're gonna detail all of this. All right, so I, I showed you that real quick. Um, holy cow, I got a lot of windows open. So I showed you that if you use a PowerPoint, I would use this top area, the slide area, as my main bullet points. You don't overpopulate this area. Just put your main bullet points here. You're going to write your notes, your details, right down in that area, in the notes section. That's what that's for, in the details section. Make sure you save everything, and then I can view it. So just a couple different ways to, to submit um, your work. Let's go back to this. Um, three kind of leads into four. Who were your competitors? And I put in there if any exist. So I kind of mentioned that like with this new pumpkin painting business. Well, honestly, I don't know of any other pumpkin painters in the area, but 
kind of want to think a little bit outside the box. So where where else would what might my potential customers spend their money? Where else might they go and spend their time instead of coming to a pumpkin painting place? Right. That that's that's my competition. Um, so this is an area where I, I find a lot of students are a little short on this. And I know it's only five points, but still, you want to you want to write down, you want to have three short-term goals. And your short-term goals should be detailed to the point where they include timing. And they include the reasons or the steps it'll take you to achieve those goals. So let me give you an example. So one short-term goal for my pumpkin painting business would be, you know, it's a seasonal business. I'm running it over a three-month period of time. Well, in the first 30 days, and I would write that, right? Zero to 30 days. In the first 30 days, I want to double my customer base in the first 30, 30 days. I want to, I want to, uh, I want to double my sales every week. So weekly, I want to, I want to double my sales on a weekly basis over the first 30 days. So there's my goal, right? Is to double my sales. Well, a, a, we want to know, well, what were my sales? What was my average sales before getting there? And then how am I going to achieve that? How do I plan? Now, you, don't have to, you don't have to go too much detail on this, but I should have an idea. So to double my sales in the first 30 days, I'll need to increase my marketing. I'll need to buy additional inventory, possibly add another employee. All right, so all the steps it's going to take for me to get to that that double sales. And then for each goal, I'm gonna outline that. And then you wanna think about a long-term goal. So three years plus, so three years plus, you wanna think about a long-term goal. And the same thing, you know, in three years, I'd like to franchise the, the, the P cubed business. Maybe that's a goal. In three years, I wanna be popular enough and successful enough. Maybe that means profitable enough to franchise this business out. And then what what would it take for me to get there and to do that? Any questions about, about all of that so far before we jump into the kind of the second half? Doing on time, boy. Any questions so far? And I'll take attendance in a matter of moments. We got a good group here. Thank you all for being here. Uh, yeah, very nice attendance today. So any any questions? Let me get through this and we'll take a break and I'll take attendance. There's no, no question so far. Okay. So factors of production, number number six here. Maybe should I outline that there or highlight it? So number six, factors of production. I won't go through each of the factors of production, but this is a section you should be detailed on. And meaning, let's say we need we need land. We're going to be a brick and mortar location for our our pumpkin painting station. Pumpkin painting station. Yeah. Our pumpkin painting business. We need an actual location. We need a physical location. So land is going to be one of our factors of production. Um, you know, brick and mortar, interesting, brick and mortar used to be the first choice for businesses. But now with the online marketplace and the digital world, brick and mortar is just an option. Like we don't really need a physical space anymore. But for a pumpkin painting station or an art store or something, we need to have a, a, a foundation, um, an actual physical location. That's what we mean by brick and mortar. So when you hear that brick and mortar. Um, so that's something we're going to need. It's one of our factors of production. 
so we're going to talk about you know why is that important why is that is that land important why is that location important why is the the money we spend on leasing that building important that's going to go into details into this factors of production and this factors of production really is a core formula for your business that's what factors of production are we combine these resources these um materials and our own skills into the operations of our business. So we want to break down each of those. Any questions on that while I scroll down and any questions there? I'll give you a second. Any questions? All right, sorry, a little pause there. So no, no questions. All right. So there's your factors of production. Um, this next portion, we're going to go into uh, in a later chapter. That's kind of why we, we bring this up early in the semester. We're going to talk about some of these sections as we move through the course. So they're also in your textbooks. They're, they're in your PowerPoints as well but the type of business you're going to be. So you want to choose your type of business. So sole proprietorship, corporation, LLC, partnership, but you want to choose it and then you want to explain why, right? Why, why, should, why does a sole proprietorship make sense for you? Why might it be important for you to incorporate? You know, maybe a partnership works best for you. But then you want to you want to detail that out and talk about why. So you choose it and then you you detail that. Now we're going to talk about the uh, details of each and the advantages and disadvantages of each as well as we go through the the course too. So we'll get more on that. Um, and the same thing coming up is organizational structure. The organizational structure talks about. Do you have a tall organization, meaning is it centralized? Um, does all the direction come from the top of the, the corporation, from the, um, the organization? The executive team make most of the decisions for the company. And that executive team might just be yourself for your own company. Um, you know, McDonald's is a centralized or tall organization. And I think on Wednesday, I'm going to give us a quick little break on Wednesday to watch that Hamburger University, the McDonald's video. So um, we'll check that out on, uh, on, on Wednesday. Um, we'll watch a quick little video about that, about entrepreneurship and uh, corporations as well. We'll get into that in franchising on Wednesday. But we talk about that in a, in a little bit of a later, um, a later chapter. And, you know, what's the difference between centralized and decentralized? right, when it comes to a business, when it comes to a, a corporation. So we're going to get into that. Um, the next section, you know, unfortunately, we don't cover a lot of marketing um, until later in this course, a few weeks down the road, actually. So this is marketing is something you definitely want to spend your time with and and think about, right? What Who's your, who's your customer base? Um, what are the four P's of marketing and how will you utilize each of those? What type of budget are you going to have for your marketing? Who's going to be your target audience? And as you're thinking of these things, if questions come up or you're saying to yourself, uh, you know, I have an idea of my marketing plan, 
I just don't know how to execute it or I don't know um, which may work best for me. Well, A, we got to remember this is, uh, this is sort of a, it's fictional, right? Made up. But that being said, we want to be somewhat realistic. And so you can always, you can always reach out to me, email me, especially if we don't get to that chapter yet. Just shoot me an email and say, hey, professor, here's what I'm looking to do. Here's my thoughts. And actually any part of this, you can do that. And I can give you feedback as we go, as we go through it. Uh, or feel free to ask it on a, in one of our lectures. And maybe because other people might have the same questions as you have. Um, so as you're building these things out, please don't, don't feel free. Um, don't feel free. Don't um, hesitate to ask questions uh, about it, uh, especially this section, the marketing section. There's a chance for you to get create, you know, be creative. The chance for you to kind of even flesh out maybe marketing that you might want to do for your business. Um, how about this next term? SWOT. Anyone know what SWOT stands for? S-W-O-T. It's an acronym. And not the SWAT teams that come in and rescue people or take down the bad guys. It's not that kind of SWAT. Any ideas what SWAT stands for? Anyone know that what S-W-O-T stands for? Even one or two of those letters. I don't do I put it there in my Yeah, Connor. Thank you, Connor. Nice job. I don't know where my thumbs up emojis are, but strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Yeah, so SWAT, you're going to break this down um, for your your company or your possible company. You know, what are, what are the strengths um, of your company? Where might your company be weak? What are opportunities for your company? So for my pumpkin painting business, maybe... Um, an opportunity is to um, to move into another season. Maybe it's maybe it's a holiday uh, holiday decoration painting station. I don't. Hey, it could be right. Uh, so maybe that's an opportunity. You know, where are threats? You know, threats. Um, less people enjoying Halloween. So um, mistreatment of pumpkins. I don't know. I'm making that up. I hope um, is a threat. Um, you know, a weakness of a pumpkin painting business. You know, what what is a weakness of a pumpkin painting business? Well, a weakness could be the shortness of the season, right? Very seasonal. Um, but I tell you what, I used to I used to do marketing for Party City, a very seasonal business, Party City, but they made the most of every season. And, you know, most of their money came from August through October, right? Halloween. So they knew how to utilize uh, that seasonality. So that's that's all part of your uh, your SWAT. So as I'm I'm going through that, I remember. Let me show you an example of a student who submitted um, a hard copy of her her paper, which. She, she gave me the, the approval, to, and this is a couple of years ago, so she gave me the approval to, to share this. And remember, this is from a time when they were submitting a hard copy. They were doing an in-class presentation. So she not only had a Word document, but she also presented and submitted a PowerPoint. So I remember she might have submitted a USB to me or files to me. So she had a PowerPoint, she had a written presentation and she did a, her own presentation, a verbal section. So um, there's an idea of a business you wanted to start. I think it's pause with a cause. The so pause with a cause, she added a little, and she did very, very well on it. She added some images of puppies there. And every, um, and it was a little bit more broken out in her PowerPoint, but every section, like that's just the mission statement right there. Every section was its own page, basically. Which, um, 
I'll give you some ideas. Factors of production was broken out. And bullet points, even in the Word document. And for organizational structure, a very good idea. Use an organizational chart. I think I showed that in one of our PowerPoints. You guys see that okay? And then she had a nice marketing section, which was about three pages. Yours doesn't have to be. But one of the pages was an actual ad that she she created. To help promote her business. And she would use this ad. She mentions that she would use it online. She would use it in like newsletters. She would use it in, and she had, she was going to do a blog as well. Um, just kind of really cool outside the box thinking. Um, and she was also posting this ad up in, um, in local shops too. So just an idea for a marketing plan. Um, thought I had one more to show you. Well, let me get into that last section. I'll show you this. So uh, section 11 talks about your leadership leadership style. That's going to come in a couple chapters. So for your last section, chapter uh, section 12 here. Do, do, do. You can choose to create financial um, paperwork, financial statements. So a balance sheet, an income statement, and a statement of cash flows. So you can choose to create all of those. Now remember, you might not have actually run a business or been part of a business. So what do you need to do? Well, you, you need to make up these numbers, right? But you wanna be realistic. Meaning for my pumpkin painting business, I think I'm going to need $5,000 to start. And if things go really well, I might want to reinvest money back into the business after three months. So what does that look like? What does that financial structure look like? What resources do I need to make that happen? You know, for marketing, for employees, for payroll, for resources, for leasing and electricity for the building, for the brick and mortar, right? For the land. So you want to think about all that and break all that out. And you want to record that information in these financial um, statements. But let's say you're like, hey, professor, I don't really like doing these documents. Well, I'll give you a, ch a chance to do an alternate ending or an alternate document, which I do enjoy. It's called an executive summary. And a lot of business plans in you know real life and reality ask for executive summaries. So an executive summary is almost like a one sheet, could be more than one page, but it's like a one sheet that is an overview of your business, that describes your business. And if you want an example of what should go in an executive summary, you could check out chapter 17 or page 594 in our text, or you can, one second here, oops. There we go. You can go into modules in our course. And you can go back into module 1A. And you can scroll down to the third item there. And click on business plan assignment exec summary. So this is the alternate ending to your paper if you want to use it. And this gives you basically what should be included in your executive summary. 
it's a breakdown, it's questions of exactly what you want to answer to put into your executive summary. All right, and like I said, even, even banks, when you're applying for a business plan loan, or maybe you're trying to get an investor, or you're trying to partner with someone, you'll want to do an executive summary to have that overview of, of your business, of your financial needs, of your commitment to the business. You want that in your executive summary. So in, if you don't want to do those financial documents, you can do this instead. All right. Any questions about all of that? Any questions about any of that, please? And if you think of questions when we're off of the call out of the conference, you could always email me too. I hope you guys know that by now. Um, any questions about any of this? Hopefully I did a good job kind of detailing it for you. I kind of like my pumpkin painting business idea. It reminds me of the, um, you guys heard of the, the wine classes and why you, why you, you do art. It doesn't have to be wine. I know we might not all be 21 yet. Um, maybe it's um, Mountain Dew and art. I don't know. It doesn't sound so good. But instead, we, we paint pumpkins. You can bring your friends, your family members, your kids, your pets. I don't know what your pets would do there, but you bring them to my pumpkin painting location. That's actually something we did with the business club uh, a couple years ago, right? Pre-COVID, we um, the local farm donated like a hundred pumpkins, and and families came, kids came, students came, and pump painted their own pumpkins. It was pretty awesome. Um, and then we 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 were selling baked goods and giving candy away. It was a great night during Halloween. So, um, all right. So enough about this. If no questions, why don't we take a five minute break? We're not gonna spend too much longer, but let's take a five minute break. We'll come back and we'll do like 10 or 15 minutes on chapter four, all right? Cause I know you've been through chapter four already. You've done the assignments on it already, but I wanna bring up some key terms and concepts in chapter four. So do me a favor. I'm gonna take attendance, so don't run away from me yet. I'm gonna take attendance now. Let's meet back here at, at, at 2.33, uh, please break until 2.33 p.m. How's that? How about that? I'm going to take attendance. Here we go. You go dark for a second.
Yeah. All right, welcome back. How's everybody doing? So we just spent about 10 minutes or so on chapter four. Video should be popping up. Thank you. All right. So we'll get us out of here on time, if not a little bit early today. All right. And remember, if you're around at 430 and you want to come to the business club meeting, please, if you're not on the business club email list, uh, shoot me an email and we'll sign you up and you'll get invited as a guest. It's a 25, 30 minute meeting at 430. Uh, that's all to kind of start us off for the semester. So we get into chapter four, which talks about understanding um, international business, uh, this uh, globalization of of business. And a lot of a lot of you did really well on your homework assignments that talked about, you know, how do we expand internationally? How do you get into the markets and what are some advantages of disadvantages of that? So I just want to bring up uh, some key key terms here, some key points. Um, and definitely read the beginning of your chapter. I think it goes into the embargo being lifted from uh, the embargo between Cuba and the United States uh, being lifted about six years ago now um, and what that means and how that opened up international travel, international sales, commerce, uh, too. So, so definitely check, you know, check that out. Uh, something I want to talk about is what they refer to here as global clusters. And basically, global cl clusters has to do with the world economy revolves around three major areas or three major marketplaces in the world. So the economy of the world is heavier in these three major marketplaces around the world. So North America, Europe, and Pacific Asia. So for the North American market, we're talking Canada, the US, and Mexico. Europe is, is basically broke out into two regions, is uh, Western and Eastern Europe, which we're gonna talk about uh, a big part of that is the European marketplace or the EU. And then Pacific Asia is Japan, China, South Korea, and Australia is in Pacific Asia. Pacific Asia, Japan, China, South Korea, and Australia. So what you get into in the chapter is different agreements or alliances that help facilitate trade or commerce among these areas. And one of these, and very important, uh, is NAFTA. You know, for the North American market, NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, which is no longer called NAFTA, right? Does anyone know the new name of NAFTA? Agreement to gradually eliminate tariffs and other trade barriers among the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So NAFTA was very important, and it basically reduced the barriers or walls between, between trade of Canada, the U.S., and Mexico. It not only reduced the taxes, which taxes are tariffs on, on imports and exports, and not only reduced the taxes, but it also, in these agreements, it built in protection for labor, it built in protection for the environment, and in some ways, 
also improved supply chain too. So NAFTA was very important. And, you know, one type of agreement that affected that European region was the EU, the European Union. Now, this was formed somewhat recently, you know, not in the last couple of years, but in the last few decades, in the early 1990s. I believe it was 1992, the European Union was formed. And once it, once it was formed, and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like. Once the European reformed was formed, and this was the original model, while the UK and the Britain was still part of it. When this was formed, it was it became the world's largest marketplace, well, largest free marketplace, I should say. So meaning commerce without barriers, without restrictions, without tariffs. So once it was formed, it became the, the largest free marketplace in the world. And they adopted that common current, that common currency of the euro. You've probably heard of the euro, right? The euro was a common um, that united these, these basically these nations in this European Union. Well, I don't think we can go down that road too much. The United Kingdom, um, I think they're fully out now. I, I forget where they are. I, I should have looked it up before. But the UK, um, Britain, for different reasons, it didn't believe in some of the, it, it, it didn't, it's the Europe, Britain's goals and beliefs didn't align with a lot of other European countries. So they decided to pull out of the European Union. Uh, I don't want to go into that too much, but um, that was the, the main thoughts about that. And they thought it also, it was affecting their, ooh, it was affecting um, their financial stability uh, as well. So I know some of you might have more on that, but I don't want to get too much into that right now. Uh, how are we doing? We're doing okay. All right. Um, it, I don't want to the Association of uh, Southeast Asian Nations. I won't spend too much time on that. Um, if you if you haven't had a chance to read about GATT, read about GATT in your book. Um, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade is basically the treaty formed in 1947 that helped establish and govern the World Trade Organization later on. Uh, the World Trade Organization wasn't formed into the mid 90s, but this GATT was the original treaty that helped build the World Trade Organization, the WTO. And the WTO is a very important organization where nations get together all around the world and help figure out disagreements help figure out some common practices that are better for all countries um, and take care of any, any trade disputes that might be happening uh, as well. All right, let's bring it through a few more concepts here. How are we doing? Okay. We talked about balance of trade. I'm not gonna get into that right now. I did just want to get into, here we go, you know, trade deficit and trade surplus. So if your country is exporting more goods than they're importing, it would be a trade deficit. If you're exporting more than you're importing, it would be a trade surplus or a positive balance of trade. We're going to skip that. When we get into competitive advantage, we're talking about the reasons why some countries sell the products, sell the goods that they do. And a lot of that competitive advantage, absolute advantage is very hard um, these days. You know, 
if a country can export a product better than anybody else can, or they can sell it, um, they're the only distributor of a product, then they would have the absolute advantage. You know, in Saudi Arabia used to have it for oil. Brazil used to be for coffee beans. Um, Canada for lumber and timber. They had an absolute advantage at different times of those industries. But now with trade, with, I mean, everything from ships to distribution channels, um, really the, the explosion of supply chain, those companies really no longer have an absolute advantage. It's very hard, difficult to accomplish these days, but they still have a comparative advantage. So they still have a comparative advantage. And when you combine different factors, those those countries might um, have you have a national competitive advantage. So different factors um, when it comes to supply chain, when it comes to skill set of workers, environmental conditions, so all those factors of of um, conditions come together to form that national competitive advantage. All right, I think I'm not gonna go through in importing, exporting. I think you guys know. Um, let me talk about this a little bit. You know, and this, I think you touched on this in your homework or your assignment is how do we get, how do we become an international company? How do we become a multinational company or distribute or sell um, to foreign marketplaces? Well, there's different ways to do it. Right, you can become an international firm. You can become a multinational firm. You can hire an independent agent. Is actually a great resource. So an independent agent is a a business or a person that lives in a foreign country that you partner with or you hire to help sell your product in that company, to help promote your service in that country or to sell your product in that country. They might do marketing for you in that country. They might help you understand local customs and laws. They might collect money for you in that country as well. So they became they become a representative of your country in that foreign location. So if you, you can't travel there or it's hard for you to travel there, um, if you wanna understand the local marketplace better, you'll hire an independent agent. So a great resource there and becoming more popular, actually, uh, definitely today with COVID and everything, they're becoming more popular. Uh, just a couple more on that, a licensing arrangement. So you can license your um, your brand, you can license your good or license your service, the technology out to other, other companies to use. And you could form a, a strategic alliance or a partnership with a foreign company. And a lot of times we call that a joint venture. So um, Ford partners with Honda, the joint venture, right? To international partnership um, there. Um, some different types of international structures, a branch office. So I used to work for some large national companies and we'd have branch offices in other markets. So able to travel to Canada for one of the branch offices. We had a branch office in London. Unfortunately, I never made it out there. I was scheduled to go. I never made it out there to London, but uh, we had a branch office in London. You know, it's just part of our uh, our setup of our of our of our company. Um, I just want to fast forward a little bit here. Yeah, barriers to international trade very important. Uh, Hofstede's, if you get a chance to check out Hofstede's Five Dimensions of National Culture, very interesting, um, talks about, you know, the difference between individualism uh, in some countries compared to collectivism in, in some countries, um, you know, and it, maybe not person on a personal level, but as a whole, as a society as a whole. Um, and these different levels of um, different dimensions of culture in, in countries. Very interesting. So check that out. 
check out Hofstede's Five Dimensions of National Culture in your text. Um, you're not too much more here. Uh, a quota is a restriction on the number or types of products that could be imported or exported through a country. So a lot of times, if a if a like the U.S. wants to protect our businesses here, we might put quotas on products coming in to help support our local businesses, right? To to restrict supply of of goods or products coming in is a way to help demand or increase our product supply here in our own country. Or it happens in other countries as well. Now, an extreme quota or an ultimate quota is an embargo. So an extreme quota or an ultimate quota is an embargo. And not only can restrict the goods or products coming into a country or that we import or export with a country, can also restrict financial investments as well. So, uh, and even travel to some extremes, all right? Um, here we go. Lastly, we talked about a tariff, right? A tariff is a tax levied on imported products. So as products come in, our government charges a tax on those products to bring them in and charges a tax to the company sending them to us. So the governor, government makes revenue off of these tariffs, off these tariffs, off these taxes collected for imported products. Now, what could a government do if they want to support our products here and wants to support the uh, support the export of our products? They can they can provide a subsidy, a government payment to help local businesses, to help domestic businesses, and to do that to compete with products that we still allow to come in, but we want to support our our local businesses. All right, we made it. We made it with a little bit of time to spare. That was my hope for today. I, I hope I didn't rush through that too much for you. But if you have any questions, please uh, email me. Uh, wanted, I appreciate you know the last couple of weeks. You guys have been been great and sticking with me throughout our our entire time, if not a little bit over. So I appreciate it. So let me give you a few minutes. Let me stop rambling on. Let me give you a few minutes early out today. Um, I want to say thank you. If you want to come see me on the business call today, the business club call, please join me uh, at 430. Shoot me an email. But let me say thank you today. Hope you come back on Wednesday. We're going to get into chapter five. We're going to do a quick video on McDonald's University, Hamburg University uh, as well. And I'll give you a, a quick appearance for my puppy to, to say goodbye on your holiday. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your Monday, and we'll see you on, on Wednesday. Yes, yes, uh, I missed you too. Yes, okay, okay, okay. Bali, you say goodbye. You say goodbye, <laughs> not to me. Oh. Oh. Your own presentation.